Today's 15.3% rally in Tesla stock was the best one day gain since March 9th of 2021, over three years ago. Zoom this out from March 9th until now. There has been a lot of ups and downs. That's for sure in this whole time frame. And even as Tesla stock was marching towards new all-time highs, you have you did not see a 15% plus day. In fact, the best day that you've seen during this march to all-time highs was a 12.5% green day. So the big question is, what is coming next? For Tesla stock. So the news that really got Tesla stock moving today, if you missed the last video, if you slept the day away and you don't know what happened with Tesla, well, Tesla has won Beijing's approval to allow FSD to enter into the country. And this happened very quick and it shows a lot of competence and really just a CEO that is working for you not against you anymore. And these are reasons why Tesla stock went up over 15% today. On a nominal basis, this can add about 14 to 15 cents of EPS to Tesla stock if the take rate for the existing fleet in China is around 22%. Now that's very near-term looking. Markets tend to be forward-looking. And I think markets understand, at least the last two quarters now, Deliveries in China have been larger than deliveries in the US. So FSD subscriptions could be a huge opportunity in China. And it's very accretive to the bottom line. See, Tesla recognizes the cost of putting the AI computer chip, FSD computer chip in the cars up front, as well as all of the extra cameras. They already include that in the COGS, the cost of goods sold. So anytime someone signs up to the subscription service, it's 90 plus percent margins. You can make an argument that it's almost 100 percent net margin when people sign up and download the software to make their vehicle full self-driving. Nonetheless, going ahead over the next coming years, you have a huge potential in Tesla with the Rubble Taxi Network and just growing that subscription service over in China. So on an actual numbers basis for, let's call it EPS, profitability, this can be huge long term. I mean, China has three times the population of the US. So that was the big catalyst today that sent Tesla stock higher. But if you do take a look at or even just think about where sentiment has been for Tesla. Just think about it. If you look back at any of the comments of any of the videos that were posted here to this channel, call it 7 to 14 days ago, they were very negative. Super negative. Most comments saying Tesla stock's going to continue to fall. It's going to go to... $80 per share, $50, $100, $120. There were a lot of people that sold out of Tesla stock hoping to buy it back at cheaper prices. And that hasn't happened. So all of those sellers are now becoming buyers again. And I think that is a big source of what is driving Tesla stock higher right now. Take a look at the stock twit sentiment barometer. It's sitting at 33, which is or 38, which is bearish. Yesterday you were more bullish than today. And that's crazy because yesterday was Sunday and today is Monday and the stock is up 15%. But more people were bullish on Sunday than today. People are getting on stock twits with their bearish sentiment and, you know, making bearish post. And I like to look at stock twits and the sentiment barometer here for Tesla, but for other stocks as well, because it's a good sign of how retail is feeling about a stock. I think we fully understand how hedge funds and institutions are feeling about a stock. Their opinions tend to be a little bit more sticky, right? Retail most of the time tends to be bullish one day, bearish the next, bullish one month, bearish the next. And retail is a very big pool of buyers and a lot of capital to buy the stock. So when people have been this bearish for, you know, the last month or two, and 
now Tesla stock's almost $200 again, people are definitely going to start feeling the FOMO out there. In terms of hedge fund institutional or just big money buying pressure, you kind of have the same thing that has happened over there, but to a more extreme you know, point. Even some of the most bullish Tesla analysts and investors ha had become not so bullish heading into Tesla earnings and expecting the worst. Adam Jonas believed Tesla stock could fall to as low as $100 per share, and he has one of the highest price targets on Tesla out, out of anyone on Wall Street. So even the bulls were getting a little bit more conservative let alone the bears, which outnumber the bulls probably five to one in Tesla, they were just outright bearish, just outright bearish. There's, there's no other way to put it. And now when you have a stock like a Tesla that is going up 15% in a single day, that's, that's catching a lot of people's attention. A 15% move in a single day is a good return for a fund for an entire year. And from a momentum perspective, from a recovery perspective, buying Tesla even now looks not so bad. If Tesla goes back to where it was to start 2024, you would still see an upside return from here of call it 35, 36% just to recover your 2024 loss. And I could obviously go into the nuances here, like I kind of mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago. Elon is back at Tesla. Now, he never left Tesla, but he wasn't doing things that were very accretive to shareholder value. Now, it's become clearer and clearer, basically every single day, that Elon is back. He's in war mode. What does war mode mean? Well, it means bettering the business, it means growing profitability and growing the business. That's what that's what war mode means to me. It's like what Mark Zuckerberg did in 2022 and the beginning of 2023. This sent the stock from $88 per share to $500 per share within that time frame. One of the best recoveries of a big tech, uh, big market cap stock you have ever seen in the history of the markets. I think something similar is starting for Tesla. I think Elon is very much on the right path here and with with elon acting in the best interest of shareholders that's usually not something you want to bet against now there's a lot of other things happening right in the last just this earnings that just passed uh elon is expediting the next generation low-cost tesla to the end of this year if not the beginning of 2025 that kind of throws into question how how that growth void um, is 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 going to be right. A lot of people were expecting Tesla stock could have multiple years of no growth or low growth, and Tesla stock's not priced for that. If the next gen vehicle comes by the end of this year, if not 2025, the beginning of 2025. Um, keep in mind, most of Wall Street were, were really expecting like 2026 for this next gen vehicle. So this is way ahead of what even the bulls thought was possible for this next gen vehicle. Maybe there's not going to be a growth gap for Tesla after all. Now you throw in here all of the improvements we're seeing to FSD, the focus on the subscription model for FSD, literally cutting the price in half. There's a lot of reasons to believe that things get better from here rather than get worse. And I think markets are looking at Tesla as a trough story where let's say EPS was was doing this, then I did this, and maybe now you're like down here and you can slowly start to recover. As you get closer to 2025 and then you get into 2025, your year over year comps are going to be really easy, really, really easy to beat. Q1 2024 came in at 45 cents of EPS. Q1 2025 could come in over a dollar of EPS. That's going to be what, you know, over 100% year over year growth. That's impressive. And that's what Wall Street is starting to look forward to to some extent now. The other aspect to Tesla stock right now in the short term 
is also a potential short squeeze. And I think that's really what you're starting to see now. Tesla short sellers have lost about $5.5 billion over the last four days, according to S3 partners. And from what I can tell, shorts really in large are not covering on short positions. Take a look at the data that we actually got today. It's, it's quite the opposite. You have covered shares of about 1.17 million, borrowed shares of 4.9 million. That means you had a net short position taken out today on Tesla of 3.73 million shares. There's 106.37 million shares that are currently sold short. That's a lot of shares that still need to be covered on. And I think Tesla, if you continue higher, especially from here, you start to get to the point where shorts get squeezed out of short positions. Taking a look at the option activity today from Big Money, it was quite positive. You had 632 orders totaling $161 million with a positive order value of 63%. Now, as I did mention in videos previously, you're going to have a lot of earnings this week. Uh, most notably, you have Amazon, Apple, AMD, and Supermicro. These are the ones that I think can really move the markets. Um, Amazon, I'm pretty bullish on Amazon earnings. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If if Amazon does bad, I'm going to be pretty surprised. So I'm not concerned about Amazon. Um, if anything, I don't think it's going to be terrible or, or just something that is bad. Okay. You have AMD and Supermicro. I think these are the biggest wild cards as far as your AI trade. If the AI trade were to like give back or give up, if the AI trade was um, just temporary after all, I think that would be a bigger problem for markets. And Supermicro for the first time in two years did not pre-announce their earnings. And that was seen as, well, maybe that's bad news for the AI trade. We don't know until we know. And tomorrow and after hours, we will know. So those are two big earnings you really want to be watching. Apple later on Thursday, I don't think that one matters to the markets too much because it's on Thursday and because it's Apple. And Apple's no longer carrying the markets like they used to. Apple hasn't done much in 2024. S&P and NASDAQ have done well. I mean, you, you don't need Apple these days. And Apple's on Thursday. You're going to have the Fed on Wednesday. And I think that's actually the biggest catalyst of this week assuming supermicro and amd and amazon just have okay or good earnings then the fed's the biggest thing to really pay attention to now i talked about this wednesday's fed meeting before so i'm not going to highlight it too much two things to really keep in mind the markets are expecting one cut from the fed as long as we get one or more cuts from the fed markets probably rally if the fed starts to talk about not cutting rates or maybe raising rates that becomes very problematic for markets that's number one but number two we're probably going to get a lot more information on the fed's balance sheet reduction whether or not they're going to slow that pace down from 60 billion a month in treasuries 30 billion a month in mortgage-backed securities markets are expecting they could cut that number in half if not more than that and that would be positive to the bond market. And really, that just means it could help lower 10-year treasury yields. And as I said in other videos, I think this 200-day moving average is a bigger level to be watching for, around $221 per share. I think that's ultimately where Tesla will go. But in, in the short term, could you see some consolidation, some sideways trading for a day or two when the RSI does get to about 70? Of course. Can it go higher than that? Of course. Ultimately, I think Tesla stock still makes its way up to about 220 relatively soon. I think there's a lot of different reasons for this, but without rehashing all of them. Number one, retail's underweight now in Tesla. Hedge funds institutions are definitely underweight in Tesla. And you have a massive short position. And I know Tesla's not always seen as the stock that goes through short squeezes, um, but it does. It, it does. There's moments of intense highs and intense lows. And when you get to those intense lows, everyone gets way too bearish on Tesla. They put their money where their mouth is. They go short and then they 
figure out, oh crap, you know, that was a bad idea. Now, I think this time's so much different than other moments because it's not just one catalyst that is causing Tesla to go higher. It's it's really, if you want to bottom line this, Elon Musk is trying to drive shareholder value. He is trying to make Tesla a better, more valuable company. Whereas you didn't hear much from Elon over the past year, six to nine months. It didn't really get any clarity on four earnings calls in a row. They were complete disasters. That has all changed. And I think that is an investment changing thesis, right? That is a short changing thesis. The biggest job you have if you are a short seller and you are actively shorting a stock is to pay attention to the stock and when the when the actual short thesis changes. When your thor- when your short thesis changes, that's when you want to cover on your short position. And I think that just happened. So, I think when you're sitting at a short position that is, you know, hasn't been higher in many many years than where it is today, and you're set up like this, I think it ultimately means shorts cover on short positions. Now, are all shorts going to cover? Absolutely not. But you typically see about 25% of shares that are sold short get covered when you do see a short squeeze from Tesla. And that would be about 27, 28 million shares. So far, reflective in the data that I can see, you've only seen about a million shares cover. Now, the first couple million shares they have the biggest impact to the stock, right? Because there's so few buyers, those are those, those, those buyers that do come in um, can start to have a big effect. But I do think there's a lot more covering from the shorts still to go from here. And 220, that, that may not be where Tesla stops in the short term. Tesla stock could rally all the way back up to 265. I think there there will be uh, some pretty strong resistance around 265 if we get up to those levels. But judging off of what we've seen today, the strongest day for Tesla stock in over three years, I wouldn't count anything out at this point. So let me know what you think about all of this down below in the comment section. Again, keep in mind that all of this information we have went over is at a moment in time where 10-year treasury yields are basically sitting at 2024 highs, right? Like imagine when 10-year treasury yields start to fall or we actually do start to get cuts from the Fed. That's where things get a lot more explosive to the upside. So I just want to throw that in there that, you know, there's other tailwind factors on a kind of macroeconomic basis that can also help affect Tesla in a positive way. And this Wednesday will be important for just that. Let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check out that link down below in the description of this video. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.